Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about topic 2.9, the legitimacy of the judicial branch. In this lesson, you're going to learn how judicial review used alongside lifelong tenure can lead to debate about how about the democratic legitimacy of the Supreme Court. One of the ways the court has legitimized itself is by following the philosophy of stare decisis, which is Latin for let the decision stand. It's basically the idea that the court will follow precedent or a previous action should be used as a guide or example. If, a, if one case is decided one way, then cases following it should also be decided in a similar fashion. Just because the court follows the philosophy of stare decisis doesn't mean that they never ever change their minds. Let's take a look at the example of Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson was decided in 1896 and legalized the policy of separate but equal, which then led to the Jim Crow era in the South. In 1954, the court overturned that decision, saying that separation was inherently unequal in the case of Brown versus Board of Education. Well, there was a change in politics from the early 1930s to the 1950s, and there was a new court on the bench. Changes in that kind of policy are connected to presidential appointments. Typically, a president is going to appoint or nominate a justice with similar views that they have. Many people believe that the longest lasting effect that a president can have is who they nominate for the Supreme Court. Here, you can see which presidents nominated which justices. In red is George H.W. Bush, and so that was Justice Thomas. In green, you have Bill Clinton, and that was Justices Ginsburg and Breyer. Blue was nominated by George W. Bush, and that was Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Alito. In purple were uh, nominated by President Obama, and that was Justices Sotomayor and Kagan. And yellow was nominated by President Trump, Justices Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. Think about that. Justice Thomas was nominated by George H.W. Bush, who was last president in 1993. I mean, I was in middle school. Dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Justice Thomas has been on the bench for a really long time. And that is one effect that President Bush has had even after he was no longer president. But just because somebody is nominated to the bench doesn't mean that they are always going to make decisions that are exactly like what that president would want. So for example, Justice Earl Warren was nominated by President Eisenhower, who was a Republican. Justice Warren was a, a, an extremely conservative governor, but turned out to be a very liberal justice. In fact, he was on the court during the decision for Brown versus Board of Education. Justice Kennedy was nominated by President Reagan, but turned out to be a swing vote. In fact, he voted with the, with the majority in the case of Oberfell versus Hodges, which legalized gay marriage. Chief Justice Roberts was appointed by George W. Bush, Bush and recently has become a swing vote. Uh, in, for example, in the case of the Department of Homeland Security versus the Regents of the University of California. This case helped to protect Dreamers and DACA. Neil Gorsuch, who was nominated by President Trump, was a swing vote in the case of Bostock versus Clayton County, Georgia. This actually protected LGBTQ civil rights. So what's the takeaway? Well, ideological changes in the court can lead to a rejection of existing precedents or overturning precedent, not following stare decisis. Unpopular decisions end up challenging the court's legitimacy, and those challenges can only be addressed through future appointments, a change in the number of justices, or a change in the jurisdiction of the court. So, 
In this lesson, you should have learned how judicial review used alongside lifelong tenure can lead to debate about the democratic legitimacy of the Supreme Court. If there's something you missed, please go back through the video and rewatch what you need to now. Then go in and answer the summarizing question in your notes so that you can get a stamp the next time we're in class. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Bye.